Hello, it's Alan here. Welcome back to another AGD tutorial and today I'm going to show you how you can export your sprite data so that you can back it up or transfer it to another game. So we'll start out here. You can see this is my little car that I built for a Rally X game and I wanted to export it into the uh, new game that I'm working on. So the first thing that I need to do is find out exactly where this sprite data is stored. So in order to do that I need to look into the spectrum memory. Now I'm using Fuse here. I will show you how to do it in Spectaculator as well but first of all we go to the memory browser and the address we're looking for here is 7D3D in hex. Now that's going to store a 2 byte number which is going to be the address of the sprite data. Here you can see it. There you can read the numbers off there. It says 90 and 70, 70, 90. Now make a note of the word order there, the number order I should say, because that's actually going to be reversed in the memory. So what we need to do is convert it into hexadecimal. This is an online converter. Uh, just do a Google search for this if you want and basically I put the number in here 9070 with 7090 in memory it's 9070 here that tells me the decimal value you can see that there and uh, so what I do now is I just copy that value and that is basically the address where my sprite data starts now I've got a total of 12 images it could be frames it could be sprites what we think about is how many images we've got in this case there are 12 sprites, each of a frame each. So 12 multiplied by the amount of memory that one image takes up, which is 128 bytes. So the total size of my image data is 1,536 bytes. So what I need to do is now go to the File menu, Save Binary Data, and uh, I need to give it a name. So I'm going to call it here uh, racecar.bin. And um, I'll just move the uh, file menu across there so you can see. There it is. So I'll call it racecar.bin. And um, I'll be saving this, as we said, at the memory address which, was, uh, which we read from the, uh, from the memory pointer. So I will... Uh, Let's move this across as well. Hang on, there we go. So I'll type that number into here, or rather paste. Let's just paste that in. There it goes. And the length, which we just calculated, so we'll put that in there as well. So basically now I've just saved a binary from that memory address with that length, and that is basically all I need to do to back up the sprite data that I've done. And I can now load that into another copy of AGD quite happily. I don't have to mess about with uh, pixel editing and all that sort of thing. So what I'm going to do now then is just to show you that it works. I've uh, opened up the basic starter AGD tap file. Here it is, as you can see from there, memory 27,000, nothing in here. Now in order to load this, I have to create the space for the sprites. If you don't do this, then you will load it in over something else. You have to create a series of blank images. That will reserve the memory and make sure that you have enough space for the data that's coming in. So in this case, I need to create 11 sprites, which I've done there. Each is one frame, so that's a total, should say 12 sprites, 0 to 11. So now all I have to do is go back to the memory browser again, look at the address at 7D3D, because this will be a different place, because AGD stores data in different places in each game. So I have to read that data off again, convert it once more to um, to decimal. And so 768, there we go, and there's the address. And copy that. And all I have to do now, in order to get that car into the uh, fresh AGD that I've just opened, as I'm sure you can imagine, is to go back now to the uh, main menu, go back to Fuse, go to the file menu, here it is, and load binary data. 
and this comes up here race car bin now what I have to do here basically is just paste in the memory address that I've just read unfortunately it's off screen here you'll just have to trust me paste that in press OK to the new address that you've just read and if you now look you can see the memory has adjusted itself and as if by magic there we go there is our car perfectly copied in all its glory so that saved me quite a lot of time I'm sure it will save you guys time as well of course not everybody uses Fuse I know a lot of people use Spectaculator and it can be done in Spectaculator as well I'm going to show you now how to do that so here I am in Spectaculator now rather than go to the memory browser in Spectaculator I'm going to go to the uh, debugger but before I do that of course I need to create a set of sprites now just to show you that it works with frames or sprites what I've done here is I'm going to create one sprite and 12 frames same principle same memory everything's the same so in order to load this sprite from the binary into Spectaculator first thing I do I go into the debugger and rather than the memory browser it's a similar equivalent if we now look for the address we have to scroll down we'll find the address for the pointer this is basically a point in memory that tells AGD as I said where to find the data so we can use it ourselves to uh, to recognize where the data is stored as well so I'm looking here for 7D 3D it's a little bit fiddly but I uh, will get there eventually okay just a second and there we go and so I can read the address here and you can see those two numbers uh, there so there's a slightly different address again as you would expect so once more same principle now I go into the hex converter 1952 converted there it is take that number copy it as before and then go back into Spectaculator and this time I go to import machine code change the start address so that it loads into the address that we've just read press OK and if everything's worked as it should we will now find that we have a single sprite there it is with 12 frames exactly the same data come in so you can basically keep your binary files on a backup give them names organize them as you want and the last thing to say would be that in Spectaculator if you want to um, export you just go to export machine code you use the debugger in exactly the same way alright hope that was useful guys thanks a lot I'll be back again with another tutorial soon cheers